Support for NPR comes from the financial services firm of Raymond James, offering personalized wealth management advice and banking and capital markets expertise, along with a legacy of putting clients' financial well-being first. Learn more at RaymondJames.com. This is Gulf Coast Live. I'm Julie Glenn. Later this hour, we're going to revisit a conversation I had last month with three local chefs and someone from the James Beard Foundation in New York City about sustainable dining. But first, more and more people are looking to change their eating habits to include more locally produced food, both for health reasons and for sustainability reasons. And while it used to be kind of difficult to do that on a consistent basis, there's been quite a bit of progress made in recent years to make it more feasible for everyday people. On today's show, we're going to highlight a local nonprofit that's working to connect people with local products. Eat Local Lee works to link local producers with local consumers as a division of the Institute for Culinary Awareness, Research, and Education. Its new interactive map contains about 22 Lee County farms, 11 farmers markets, 10 breweries and distilleries, five fresh fish markets, and two meat markets. We're joined today by its executive director, Courtney Frazier. Courtney, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And I'm also joined in the studio by someone who works year-round to raise produce, beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, pork, ducks, eggs, and honey. Boy, that's a pantry full. Uh, Nicole Cruz is one of the owners of Circle Sea Farms in Felda and Bonita Springs. Nicole, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. And as always, we invite you, the listeners, to join our conversation. The number to call is 877-428-8255. That's 877-GCU-TALK on Facebook. We're at WGCU Public Media. And on Twitter, we're at WGCU using the hashtag GCL. So, Courtney, start by telling me a little bit about Eat Local Lee. And how we got started? Yeah. Um, it actually started when my husband came back from a trip to the Finger Lakes region of New York. And he had two maps. One was, like, all cheeses. And you could go around from cheese place to cheese place. And another one was a wine map. And I knew that we had a great local food scene here, but I'd never seen a map. And I spoke to a friend of mine, Nancy McPhee, at the Visitors and Convention Bureau here in town. And I said, hey, how come we don't have a map? She said, well, nobody's done one. You could do one. And I'd never made a map before, but I'm a huge foodie. And I knew a lot of the farmers. Um, and so I went on, I just went on a limb and started uh, getting the information together and I wrote for the grant and I received last year we received uh, about twelve thousand five hundred dollars to put uh, the first map together and publish it which we did uh, we had twenty thousand of our first maps and a uh, little over sixty listings and it was distributed by me mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it wasn't able to get very far but we did get a, a bunch out um, and we did it again this year uh, wrote another grant and um, we were able to do another 20,000 and this year I wrote distribution into it. So we were able to send them out far and wide and they're in hotels and tourism kiosks and you should see them now. And as it stands, it's a brochure basically. It's like a... It's it is. It, it's a four by nine. Uh -huh, it's a four by nine um, basic brochure size, but it folds and uh, to about six um, panels and then flips open so that the map is on the inside. And then there's information about the map and what's uh, in season. And then a couple of our advertisers um, that have supported the map over the years, um, like 31 Produce and Shangri-La Springs and uh -huh. Irene's Dream came on board this year. So that's, so. but then you also now have an app that's we on do. your phone that you can download. I downloaded it this morning. It's very user friendly. It is. So another thing, um, because most people, a lot of folks like to have the convenience of being able to you know, get the driving directions and the physical map, the printed map is great. But really, the map, when you look at it, is more of a, you know, kind of a representation. Mm -hmm. So um, the app idea uh, was kind of twofold. And this is the first phase, but it's a listing of all of the farms and markets, basically everything that you see on the physical printed map, mm -hmm. but on your phone. And there's also driving directions and a check-in feature, feature so that if you want to keep track of all the places that you've gone, you can have a running list of every place that you've checked in. And that allows us some other things too, like maybe if you we find somebody who's gone to all of the places listed, that maybe we could award them a prize or something along those lines. So does it? Um, but does that then, when you do a check-in, does that end up translating, or can you connect that with your social media to get the word out about the farm? Not at this point. Um, right okay. now, it's just on the app, and it's your personal kind of list. Your log uh, of your log of where you've gone. Mm -hmm. The, the um, conquest. But of that's farms. a great idea, and we're always looking for ideas. Um, so if there's something you want to see on the app or a feature, one of the things that farmers have said in the past is they'd love to be able to sell produce or, or you know, somebody could buy something and, and pay for it uh, with the app. 
and, then, and just then come pick it up then come pick it up and we could do that with farmers markets as well we're trying to to put a beta program in place in order to do that. Is it, well, it's kind of like what, uh, there are some markets that do that, I mean, grocery stores and things that may yes. do that kind of thing. So this would be kind of like doing that, but on a, a just a purely local level. Correct. That's awesome. I mean, for the future. Mm -hmm. But as it stands now, it's pretty cool because you can put in here, I'm gonna go to this farm, and then it you, you're kind of prompted to get driving directions. Mm -hmm. And right there in the app, it's gonna, you say, okay, yeah. And it finds your location and gives you directions on how to actually drive your car there, which is, something that doesn't happen on a paper map <laughs> no, and you always have your phone and you don't always have your your six-fold right. paper map in front of you and then you i mean you could plug it into your little you know drive thing in your car maybe able to see that map so I mean, that's that's really uh user friendly but it also has farmers markets on it and i mm -hmm. remember a long time ago i tried to put together a farmer market map and i failed because there's so many of them how do you keep up with that well there's a few people that run several markets so cape coral runs three or four markets in the cape and then um betsy and jean bear runs about i don't know eight or ten mm -hmm. markets i think uh, they have the one at coconut point i know that yeah they have a bunch and then um linda miller um from 41 markets she ha runs a couple of centinis and i think beach baptist mm -hmm. so um i've just been in touch with the those are those are bigger ones they're ones that come back every year we have some that um, are hit or miss and a lot of times they're more kind of flea markety mm -hmm. um, and i worked closely with the university of florida and the extension agent um, at the time was roy beckford and we kind of made a, a decision that they needed to be mostly food mm -hmm. you know that was okay if you had a few items here and there but the majority of the vendors needed to be food related in order for them to be a, 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 a farmer's market and eventually we'd like to certify them so that you know, you say 25, 30, 40 percent of the produce is local, and uh, we certify that because we we meet with the farmers and we know what they're selling, and and the farmers markets themselves they want to be able to have that certification. That's a selling point. Yeah, that's interesting that you bring that up, and I was going to ask that next anyway. So this is great, but it's kind of like it's sometimes I don't think people realize how much food that's at a farmers market and produce may not be from near the area. It's coming from sometimes other states and other countries that's true and the hard part with that is that when people go to a farmer's market they wanted to buy they want to buy everything they don't want to have to make four more stops on the way home so you're going to see things that don't grow here like say baking potatoes we don't grow russet potatoes in florida you only find them in idaho and the northern states but people want baking potatoes and so a farmer's market will most likely have baking potatoes it's just one of those things For convenience yes people want to see those so but you can get a majority of things, you know, if there's an uh, avocados, you should be able to get mangoes, um, bananas and, and pineapples, things of that nature. Those grow here mm -hmm. um, and we should be able to, in season, be able to find, find them here. But it, it's hard. <laughs> currently, the map is just Lee County, right? Correct. Is there any possibility of it expanding south to Collier or north or yes. out east? Um, I have actually put it out there, and I'd love the opportunity to work with um, the Chamber of Commerce in Naples. I, I actually, just a few weeks ago, sent them an exploratory letter to see if it's something they'd be interested in doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm certainly open to, to doing that and expanding out. And that was kind of the idea is that we now that we have a map, an app, and a website, that we could um, ju just use that as like a template and then bring in the data from other places in order to make it specific to well, you have something to area. show right you mm -hmm. have something to show and then you can have data backing mm -hmm. it up proof of performance right well we're working well i do have that as well um to see like how many people checked in i can see that uh -huh. um so i know you know i can see how many people downloaded the app and i can also see um because we have distribution now are they flying off the shelves are they being taken out of the rack are you having to refill it so how has response been so far it's been really positive um with this new map, because we were able to um, team up with Priority Marketing, we have a um, more of a presence. We have a press release. I've got the distribution and um, things like this. Coming on the air with you is a wonderful opportunity to get the word out. And that's really where we're at now. It's all promotion. Yeah, because letting people know it exists, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because it's free. <laughs> well, the thing that it's talking about is farms. You live on a farm yourself, right? I do, a five-acre farm in Buckingham. So you have, or, and I guess you're on the map. No, no, no. Now, the map is only for farms that are open to the public and that want to sell product at their location. Okay. So um, I don't sell anything. You know, I'm not open to the public and we only have eggs right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you probably a lot of eggs. From what I understand, people who start with eggs, they end up like, I have to give away a lot of eggs. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But for me, it's from my heart. And so I walk the walk. I try to talk the talk. And um, 
you know, I, I understand what it's like for a farmer. I know I not not I'm not saying well, Nicole works circles around me, but um, circle C's. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <you will>. yes. <laughs> um, but, but I know what goes into it, and I understand. You know, when when you get hit by a, a storm or or when the weather is weird or you know, mm -hmm. I know now. You know, when you have livestock, that you have to deal with dead stock. It's just one of those things. Yeah. And I appreciate it. <laughs> if you're just joining the show today, I'm talking with Courtney Frazier. She's the executive director of Eat Local Lee. And I'm also joined by Nicole Cruz from Circle C Farms, whose farm store is in Bonita Springs. Have you made an effort to eat local? And if you'd like to add your voice to our conversation, give us a call now. The number to call is 877-428-8255. That's 877-GCU-TALK. So, Nicole, I want to ask you a little bit about your farm. You're on the map, right? Yes, absolutely. That, it's definitely a commercial farm. Absolutely. So, tell me about what you do. You're well, in Felda and Bonita. Correct. Correct. We have two farms. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our farm store. And uh, our little farm is in Bonita. And that's where our egg laying production is uh -huh. because we have several thousand um, laying hens. So, yes, I totally get it. When they start laying, they just keep laying. <laughs> All <laughs> the eggs. Plenty of eggs. Well, the good thing is Easter's coming. So we have plenty <laughs> of eggs for everybody to not only eat but to die and eat. Um, then we also have our farm store in Benita next to the Shangri-La Springs Resort and Spa. And we oh, are, okay, we so are, it moved. We did. We moved off of the little farm. We've grown so much over the last couple of years that um, we needed more space. So we have a really cute little building and a really big parking lot, which is great. Yeah, big parking and lots are nice. It's very important. And uh, so we're situated directly next to the Shangri-La on Old 41. So it's easy access from you know, the north end of Benita and Estero and Fort Myers, as well as from Naples. So, so. Your, your main focus is, though, um, animals and animal products. Correct. We, we actually work with local farmers, like in Yoni Farm, for our produce, uh -huh. as well as the Shangri-La and their organic garden for produce. But we actually raise livestock. We are a protein farm. We're not a produce farm. And so what I mean by that is we raise um, all of the meat breeds. So we've got our beef, our lamb, our chicken, our pork, our um, ducks. We've got duck eggs. We have chicken eggs. We have 125 beehives. So we have our own honey as well. And then we're also, for those people who are familiar with us, know that we are the only farm in the state and one of three in the country to have an on-farm USDA inspected um, abattoir and butcher shop. So everything that we raise on our farm gets harvested by hand in our butcher shop or in our facility and work through our butcher shop and then we sell directly to, um, to the public, to our customers. There's only three of those in the country? There are. There's us, there's one in Georgia, and there's one in California. So before you had that on site, what did you have to do? Did you have to haul them somewhere else? We did. Where? We had to transport either to the Tampa area um, central Florida or down um, south from us. There's another facility in Moorhaven and one in Miami. And I'm imagining that would be some stress on the animal. It was. It, it really was. And it was also a logistics nightmare because we had to work in with other people's facilities. So it made it somewhat untimely and inconvenience uh, for us to be able to have our animals done, the meat prepared, and then to have it available for sale. So now we control everything. And that's... It's Another thing that's really interesting, too, is when you talked about we have beef, we have sheep, we have this, they're not the usual breeds either. No, no. Well, the, the beef we have are Angus and Brangus, and Brangus is Brahma and Angus Cross. But our sheep, our lamb meat, is actually our own breed. And we created our own breed because everyone told us we were crazy to bring in certain breeds because they were not going to survive here in Florida with the heat and the humidity. And I, I, you know, when we have a tour, which we do during December, January, February, and March when it's cooler, and everybody comes down from up north, I share that with them because it, we kind of have three seasons here in Florida. We have hot, hotter, and hottest, mm -hmm. and which corresponds with wet, wetter, and wettest. And only certain breeds will survive without having becoming sick and, and being needing to be put down. Well, I think having hooves so. in water and mud all the time it's can be good. tough on certain breeds, but some breeds are able to deal. Yes. Yeah. So what we did is we crossed a couple of breeds and created our own. Uh -huh. And then the way our property is designed, we had used to be very, very long ago, it used to be an old orchard. Mm -hmm. So a portion of the property has got high and low areas for um, the runoff. The water to settle in. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it works really well actually for the sheep and the cattle. It also works super great for the poultry mm -hmm. because when it rains, it goes down into the ditching, it goes away, but the poultry are out 24-7 on the grasses, on the pastures, eating. 
so they love it. So I'm wondering, I, I, heard, I was reading about the, um, the pasture grazing and mm -hmm. everybody kind of having a good time out on the grass and right. living the best life yes. that a livestock animal can. Do you have any problems with predators though? Because I hear a lot about that out east um, mm -hmm. with, you know, the Florida panther and other predators that are around. We do, occasionally we have um, coyote and bobcat issues. Mm -hmm. We also sometimes, depending on travel flow for the panthers, but predominantly, because of the fact that we have livestock guardian dogs, we have three Maremmas and they are truly working dogs. They are, they're third shifters. So they, they work from like six to eight, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. And they're out there with the sheep, with the cattle, with the poultry, and they just lay down in the field. And if they think there's an issue or a problem, they are up and they're running protection. They're our, they're our guarding system. Wow, have they ever had to fight someone off? Um, you'll hear them barking at different times of the night because when it comes around a full moon, we'll get a lot of the coyotes. Really? Yeah, particularly if there's a mama coyote with a den around the area. Poultry is easy pickings, so to speak. So um, the guardian dogs are in motion, wow. you know, before and during and after a full moon for a few days. But they, you know, we don't use, lose that many. We're fortunate. That's really kind of a cool story. So, okay, so you have to have your mind wrapped around all this kind of we stuff. Do. How does marketing figure into that? And how does something like this help a farm like yours? Well, the beautiful part about this is not only is there the physical map, because a lot of us love the technology, but we really like the tactile need to be able to have the, the mm -hmm. map in front of us. But it's also something that we have in the store. So we, because we support other produce farms in our area, we want to make sure that not only do people know that we have our meats and our proteins available, but that there's other farmers in the area, that there's also the distilleries. There's also the, um, the seafood. Yeah. You know, we, we have the farmer's markets, that there's the breweries. It's really important for people to know that within our own community, that we can provide food and beverage that's locally grown with love here in the community. So it's really important not only to have the map, but the app yeah. so that people can say, oh wait, I didn't realize that was there. Or, oh, you know, I live in Fort Myers, here's what's there. Or, oh, I live in Benita. Oh, there's another place, this is so cool. And people can actually enjoy local sourced vegetables and fruit and meats because when they come into us a lot of times they either are just driving by and said oh i'm going to check that out or they know who we are or it's a word of mouth thing mm -hmm. so when they come in and they can grab the um the brochure which is this beautiful map the printed one or we can say hey here's the sign look at this download the app mm -hmm. people are able to see what's here local and and there's a lot of drive for individuals to say, I really want to eat what's here provided year round. I want to be able to know my farmer. I want to know where my stuff is coming from. I want to know what I'm eating and what I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. And so if they get it from, you know, if they find out about this from us and us sharing, that's really important. And then at the same time, if they're eating the produce and they don't know about us for their proteins, they'll, oh, wow. So Circle C Farm is here and they're, all, they're in Bonita and I can go shop six days a week. and. I can go in there just the same as I do like in the grocery store. Like you don't have to pre-order with our farm store. Well, one of the things so. that you mentioned is the year roundness. Mm -hmm. And Courtney, I think it's great that on the back, mm -hmm. tell me about the back of that. It has like a little uh, graph there of yeah. what's being grown when. And I think a lot of people have this idea that everything shuts down, including farms in the summertime, which we know is not the case when you have protein roaming around out there on the grass. But <laughs> tell me what happens with produce uh, in the summertime. Well, there are things that grow here um, year round. And the, the, what we have on the map with this graphic is a list of what is growing and which months that you'll find it. Everything from asparagus to watermelon. Um, and it lists them out in terms of, you know, month to month. Uh, so right now we are in March, April, we're in April and you know, you got your bell peppers and uh, carrots are coming online. I know that peaches up north are coming on, uh, some blueberries are, are up, strawberries are still in season. Mm -hmm. So this is the high time right now. Um, but we do have a lot of farms that are open all year round. Circle C being one of them, 31 Produce is one, Rosie Tomorrow's is open year round. So is um, uh, Shelley's uh, Southern Fresh and Buckingham Farms. Many of our farms are open year round, even if they're not producing like lots, with, like with um, say 31 produce, yeah, they got all kinds of things that are going going on. And there are some farms that are, um, especially in the summertime, they really want to attract people. And even if they don't have a whole lot of produce to talk about, they're doing events and activities mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. I know like Southern Fresh, they've got food truck nights, you know, where you can go out there and, and enjoy an evening on the farm and, and hear some live music. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're doing a lot of things. So it's pretty easy to find. The app is called Eat Local Lee. Just go to your app store and look it up. I did it this morning. If I can do it, you can do it too. Um, it's not that hard to find um, and just that downloads right onto your phone and it gives you a map. And if you want a map in your hands, they're just distributed around town locally. Mm -hmm. They're uh, at the hotels and the kiosks and at the Visitors and Convention Bureau. All right. Well, thanks both for coming in. Uh, that's all the time that we have for this part of the show. Uh, I was talking with Courtney Frazier, Executive Director of Eat Local Lee. Courtney, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. And I also want to thank Nicole Cruz from Circle C Farms. Thanks a bunch, Nicole. It's good to see you again. Thank you. You too. When we return, we're listening back to a conversation we had.